If you've ever taken a calculus class, one of the things you probably spent a good amount of time doing was finding the tangent line to a curve at a particular point. Or more specifically, finding how to write the equation of that tangent line. One of the reasons this is so important is it gives us a way to approximate the value of a complicated function near a point whose coordinates we know exactly. We would like to do something similar for multivariable functions. For a function that takes two inputs, x and y, its graph is a surface in 3D space, and the analog of a tangent line here is a tangent plane. All right, but just like with tangent lines, we want to find the equation of a tangent plane. For a tangent line, that came down to computing two things. The point, x0, y0, where the tangent line touches the curve, and the slope of the tangent line, that is, the derivative of the curve at the tangent point. It may be a little hard to see how we can take the scheme and repurpose it for tangent planes, since planes don't have a slope in the usual sense because they slant differently in different directions. To help us get a handle on this, consider this. We know a surface has two derivatives associated with it a partial derivative in the x-direction, and a partial derivative in the y-direction. Taken by themselves, these partial derivatives can only define two separate tangent lines to our surface. But there are two important things to note about them. First, both tangent lines are independent of each other, meaning they go in different directions and aren't parallel. And second, since they are both tangent to the surface, they must both be contained in whatever the tangent plane is. And just like how two independent points define a line, two independent lines define a plane. And this plane must be the unique tangent plane to the surface at the given point. All right, good to note. But we're still a ways off from having an actual equation of the tangent plane. But we did learn something useful. We now know that the two partial derivatives of our function should be sufficient to define our tangent plane. And this is important since our formula for finding the tangent line also makes use of derivative information. There are actually a few ways you could take the partial derivative information and derive a formula for the tangent plane, but I think the approach we'll look at here is especially clean and also harkens back nicely to how tangent lines worked. Let's go back to tangent lines for a moment and say we want to find the equation y equals l of x of the tangent line to some function f of x at the point x0. One way to characterize the formula l of x of a tangent line is it is the unique linear function whose value and derivative at x equals x0 both agree with those of f. That is, l of x0 equals f of x0 and l prime of x0 equals f prime of x0. If we use point-slope form to express l of x at the tangent point x0, f of x0, we automatically get the first condition satisfied, which you can verify for yourself by plugging in x0. And if we take the derivative of our current formula in progress for l of x, we get that it collapses into just m. But remember what our second requirement says. It says the derivative of l must match the derivative of f at x0. So that means we must have that m is equal to f prime of x0. And this leads us to the general equation for the tangent line. L of x equals f prime of x0 times x minus x0 plus f of x0. We can go through a similar process to find the general equation of a tangent plane. In this case, we want to find the equation z equals p of x and y of the tangent plane to some two-variable function, f of x and y, at the point x0, y0. Just like with the formula for a tangent line, we can characterize the formula p of x and y of the tangent plane as the unique planar function whose value and both partial derivatives agree with the original function f at the point of tangency. The general formula for a plane function is p of x and y equals ax plus by plus c. But just like before, if we translate this plane so that it's centered at the tangent point, we can satisfy the first requirement for free. In this case, since we're dealing with a point on a surface, 
z0 is the same as f of x0, comma y0. So now we need to figure out what values to plug in for a and b to meet the two derivative requirements. This first derivative requirement involves the partial derivative in x of p. So let's see what it looks like for our current formula in progress. Since we're taking an x derivative, we can treat anything that's not a pure x in the formula as a constant, such as y and x0 and y0. So pretty much everything disappears, and we're just left with a. Well, that's pretty nice. Apparently, the coefficient a is just whatever the partial derivative in x is for our tangent plane. And since it's a tangent plane, this derivative must match up with that of the target function f at the tangent point. So a is equal to the partial of f in x at x0, y0. All right, one down, one to go. And really, we're pretty much home free at this point, as solving for b is almost the exact same process. If we look at our final derivative requirement, we need to take the y partial derivative of our p function. In this case, everything that's not a pure y cancels away, and so we get, similar to before, that the partial of p in y at x comma y is equal to b. And since the y partial of p must match the y partial of f, we have that b equals the y partial of f at x naught comma y naught. And so putting it together, we have our general tangent plane formula.